What was I placed on earth here for? It truly was to build a kingdom, not of my own, but of the Lord. I want my life to count for Jesus. to be true I want to be faithful in all that I do I want to be faithful through every test I want to be faithful I'll give in my best I want to be faithful I want to be true, I want to be faithful in all that I do, I want to be faithful through every test, I want to be faithful, I'll give 
my best. I want to be faithful. I want to be true. I want to be faithful in all that I do. I want to be faithful through every test. I want to be Jesus, for earthly things will quickly fade. No need to add to worldly riches. I only seek eternal gain. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. Jesus say, Well And the whole church said, yeah. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray that tonight will be an enriching night for everyone. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. 
We thank you for your people gathered here. And we pray for all those who are hearing the word right now, both here and all over the city of Lagos and the state of Lagos, and also all over Nigeria and beyond Nigeria and Africa and beyond Africa. We're asking, O oh Lord, your bless everyone in the study of the word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. The promise you have for us, the precept you have for us, the commandment you have for us, and everything you have for each one. We pray that none of us will miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray you turn us around, Amen. transform our lives, Amen. and help us to enrich all the lives of this study of the word that we are going to learn in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me a good better. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can sit down. We're coming to John chapter 10. And tonight we're looking at verses 31 through to verse 42. John chapter 10, reading from verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work will stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, and sent into the world the blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, do ye believe me not? Believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore sought they again to, to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Can you say that with me? Verse 42. And many believed on him there. As you look at the passage you are studying today, it's curious. It's surprising. Because the passage begins with verse 31. Look at verse 31. It says, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Think of a passage starting like that. That the Jews in the presence of Christ, they took up stones and they wanted to stone him. But thank God, even though they wanted to stone him, he wasn't intimidated. He wasn't afraid. And as he continues, look at the last verse of that passage. And many believed on him there. A passage that started with stoning and yet ended with many knowing him as Christ, believing him as Christ, accepting him as Christ, receiving him that this is the Christ and this is the Savior. But the question is, why would anyone want to stone Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. Are you asking yourself, why would anyone want to stone the King? Here is a miracle worker that came to turn their water into wine. And you're asking the question, how is it that anybody will want to stone a miracle worker that came to enrich their lives and bless their families and bless their very lives? Why would anyone want to stone the teacher? Because in chapter 3 we're told, thou art a teacher come from God, because no man can do this miracles that that doest, except God be with him. The teacher of eternal truth, the teacher of the saving truth, the teacher that has come to enlighten them and drive away darkness and ignorance from them. Why? Would anyone to stone a teacher that came from heaven? In chapter 4 we are told, here is the Savior, those people said to the woman, 
who have seen him ourselves, who have believed him ourselves, were not just believing because of the word you have spoken, but we know that this is the Savior of the world. And the question is, how is it that anybody will want to stone the Savior that came from above? In chapter 5, you remember that man that had been lame, that had been sick, impotent for 38 years, and Jesus saw him lie down there, and he knew he had been there for a long time. And he said, well, thou be made whole. He said, I have no man. And Jesus said, take up thy bed and walk. Nobody had ever come like that to the land of Israel to raise up a man who had been impotent, incapacitated for those 38 years. And yet look at this passage now. And they picked up stones wanting to stone him. How is it that anybody will want to stone the healer, the supernatural healer? The supernatural master has come to chapter 6. They were, the disciples were in the boat and they were rowing and it was a great storm. And then Jesus was walking on the sea. And as he walked on the sea, the moment he entered into the ship, there was a great calm. And the question that comes to my mind is, how is it that anybody on earth, anybody in his right senses, anybody that sees what Christ has done, what Christ has made to humanity and to the children of Israel and to his own disciples, and everywhere he went, he was doing good. How is it that anybody will want to pick up stones and stone anybody like that? In chapter 7, we'll, we'll find the divine worker. In fact, all the Pharisees said to go and catch him. And the officers came back and they didn't bring him. And the Pharisees said, where is he? The person we told you to go and bring, they said, no man ever spake like this man. We've heard of Moses, it's not like this. We've heard of Joshua, it's not like this. We've heard of David, it's not like this. No man ever spake like this man. How is it? Anybody will want to study a person that said, he cried aloud in chapter 7. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth on me, out of him shall flow rivers of living water. The person who has come to bring the fountain of heaven to everyone and distribute it to everyone to refresh every life in the power of the Holy Ghost. How is it? Anybody will want to stone a man like that. In fact, he told them in chapter 8, he said, before Abraham was, I am the eternal son of God. And this eternal son of God from generation to generation, everlasting to everlasting. How is it that any man will want to pick up stone and stone the one that is all from eternity and you know in chapter 9 he was the one that saw this man that had been born blind and then he made clay and he put on his side said go to the poor side loam and go and wash and he went and he saw the man had no eyes God the creator Christ the creator he, he made him to receive new eyes as if a new creation had come and Jesus found him later and he said you believe Believe on the Son of God. He said, Who is it, Lord, that I may believe? He said, You have both seen him, and he it is that is talking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and they worshipped him. That is the very Son of God. And then they picked up stones, they wanted to stone him. What came on them? How is it that anybody will want to stone the very Son of God who will come to chapter 10 and has been talking to us and teaching us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. He said, all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring. There will be one fold and there will be one shepherd. How is it? Is the shepherd of the whole sheep, all the sheep in the whole universe, in the whole earth, from generation to generation. How is it anybody will want to assume the universal shepherd? How is it this unique shepherd? How is this this unusual and common shepherd? Anybody will want to pick up stone and stone him? There's only one reason we can gather for this. Why? They wanted to stone him. Come back to chapter 10 and I'm going to read from verse 27 in chapter 10 of John. Chapter 10 of John. I'm reading from verse 27. It says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand verse 30 everybody one two three go 
I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones that and they began to stone him. You know what? They didn't understand. Because of their ignorance, because of their lack of understanding of what he had just said. He said, nobody can pluck my sheep out of my hand. Hold on to that. And then he turned around and said, nobody can pluck my sheep out of my father's side. He made the father and himself equal. Nobody can pluck anybody out of my hand. Nobody can pluck anyone out of my father's son. That means your hand is as strong as the hand of your father. The hand of Jesus, the strength of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the upholding grace of Jesus is as strong as mighty as the upholding grace of, of the father and because he equated himself with the father and then he told them plainly I and my father are one. They couldn't bear that. Therefore it says in verse 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Put this down. Ignorance brought indignation. Ignorance, the ignorance of who Jesus Christ was, that's the thing that brought the indignation and the anger and the wrath that they had. And they said, no, a man like this, a person like this, will not live. You see, when a sinner does not understand the word of God, instead of understanding, instead of praying, instead of pleading, oh Lord, make me to understand, instead of that, indignation will well up inside him. Anger will well up inside him. Wrath will well up inside him. Filled with anger and indignation, he'll want to do the undoable. He'll want to stone the everlasting God. He'll want to stone Emmanuel. He'll want to stone God with us. He'll want to stone the Savior of the world. He'll want to stone the shepherd of the sheep. But all is because of ignorance. Because they understood not. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. They didn't understand. I and my father are one. And because of that lack of understanding. That's why they picked up stones. And they wanted to stone him. Look at John chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 6. John chapter 10 verse 6. This parable speak Jesus us unto them and but they understood not what things they were which is speak unto them i am the door i am the shepherd i am the way i am the truth i'm the life before abraham was i am all that they couldn't understand that the almighty god had said in exodus i am that i am and here comes the son of god saying i am i am i am repeating that over and over that he is the eternal one as eternal as the father is so eternal the son is as everlasting as the father is so everlasting is the son as a great as the father so great is the son and because they couldn't understand that they wanted to stone him. They wanted to get rid of they couldn't understand of what they couldn't understand. It was an embarrassment to them because they've been in religion for such a long time and the simple sentences that Jesus made just threw them off and they didn't understand. Why is it people do not understand? We're looking at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 13 we're looking at verse, at verse 19. You hear the word of God it's wonderful to understand. Because if you don't understand, a negative reaction, a negative response, and a negative action will come out of that lack of understanding. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. You see that? Anyone hearing the word of the kingdom, the word of the king of kings and the lord of lords, anyone hearing that and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. 
lack of understanding. And because of that lack of understanding, they couldn't bring forth fruit. And because there wasn't any fruit of redemption, any fruit of righteousness, any fruit of uh, repentance, then the only thing they could do is that because the life of Jesus was convicting them, because the stand of Jesus was convicting them, the utterances of Jesus were convicting them, they couldn't stand the conviction. And the only thing to do is to get rid of what was bringing that conviction to them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 27. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, we're looking at verse 27. It's a problem of understanding. I pray you will understand. I said you will understand. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, verse 27, for the heart of these people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. The Lord here said, quoting from Isaiah, this is Paul the Apostle, quoting the word of the Lord, saying, they close their eyes, they close their minds so that they will not understand. And because they couldn't understand, they couldn't act right in the direction they ought to act. And when people don't understand like that, their behavior betrays them. Their action betrays them because they couldn't understand and they couldn't appreciate what they couldn't understand. Second Peter chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 12. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 12. It says, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken in and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. They speak evil of the things that they understand not. They do evil to the things they understand not. They plan evil against the things they understand not. The word of life eternal and the word of uh, life supernatural, the word of the word of God that was spiritual to change their lives, to turn their lives around, and because they couldn't understand, all they could do was to pick up stones and want to stone the one giving them that word. Look at that verse 12 again, but these, talking about people, the people that didn't accept the word of God, didn't understand the word of God, and didn't have the word of God changing them, transforming them, and turning their lives around they couldn't have the word of God to prepare them for heaven and these as natural both bees made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption you will not be part of them you will not be like them you will not stone your savior you will not stone your redeemer he came to die for us he said I'm the good shepherd I gave my life for the sheep and since he came to die for us if they understood here is the greatest person that ever came here is the messenger of God here is the Messiah here is the expected Christ here is the anointed one here is the one that could turn their lives around here is the one that will go to heaven to prepare a place for them and when he's going to prepare a place for them he'll come again and take them unto himself all they could think about is stone him get rid of him but thank God they couldn't I said that God, they couldn't. Their hearts were filled with indignation because of their lack of understanding, their lack of salvation, and the lack of spiritual insight. Let's come back to John chapter 10, verses 31 to 42 that we're studying tonight. And the topic tonight is stone-hearted sinners before the Savior. Stone-hearted sinners before the Savior. Here were sinners rigid sinners, unconverted sinners, and they were hardened sinners. These were people that had stony hearts, and Jesus was the one sent by the Heavenly Father to turn their lives around and to change them, and to transform them, and to save them, to convert them, and prepare them for heaven. But sorry for them, they didn't, they didn't understand, but I'm happy I understand. I said I'm happy I understand. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. And he's my shepherd. He's the one that is coming again. And when he comes again, he'll take me to heaven. How about you? 
He'll take us to heaven in Jesus' name. Stone-hearted sinners before the Savior. There are three things we're talking about. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the damnable reaction of ignorant sinners. The damnable reaction of ignorant sinners. When people are ignorant, they do a lot of things against their own soul. Against their own destiny. Against their own eternal life. That the damnable reaction of ignorant sinners. Point number two, the divine revelation of the infallible scripture. The divine revelation of the infallible scripture. As they began, as Jesus Christ began to ask them, what's the stone doing in your hand? What do you want to do with the stone? What do you want to stone me? I've done a lot of good works. For which of those the healings and deliverance are you stoning me? And he said, no, it's not because of that. It's because you said you made yourself a God. And then he appealed to the scriptures, infallible scripture. And he gave divine revelation. I pray God will open your eyesight. The divine revelation of the infallible scripture. Point number three, the decisive response to the incarnate son. The decisive response to the incarnate son. Because we have the response of the people eventually when they said, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. But all things that John speak of this man were true. Here is their decision, a decisive response to that incarnate son. And many believed on him there. You'll be a believer. I said you'll be a believer. You'll be among the many going to heaven that believe now the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming back to point number one. Tell me number one there. The damnable reaction of ignorant sinners. We're coming to John chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 31. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up, took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them. Many good works have I showed you from my father, from the opening of the eyes of the blind, to the raising of the dead, and to curing the leper, cleansing the leper, and then the issue of blood, all that dried up. And the people that had evil spirits, he removed everything, he delivered them, and whatever problem they had, he touched him or he touched them, and all those problems went away. Many, many good works, almost uncountable. Many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of those works told ye me? Then the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work, for a miracle, and for those supernatural wonders we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou being a man makest, makest thyself God. They understood what he said. They understood. Eh, they were not deceived at all. They understood what he said when he said, I and my father are one. Eh, you cannot say God and man are one. You cannot say God and angel are man. But God and the son of God, like God, having the same nature as God, coming from all eternity as God, from generation to generation as God. Everything the Father can do, He can do. The Father can raise the dead, He can raise the dead. The Father can give life, He can give life. The Father can create, He can create. And so He said, I and my Father are one. They understood that, that that meant that you are saying that you are God. And because they didn't accept that, that's why they said, that's blasphemy. We cannot take that. But let's understand, these people, their hearts were hardened. Zechariah spoke about them. Look at Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah spoke about them. They were not reading their scriptures. If they were reading their scriptures, they would have understood that they were fulfilling prophecy. Look at uh, Zechariah chapter 7 and I'm reading here from verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7 Reading from verse 12, Ye, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They made their hearts, they were hardened, as adamant stone, lest they should hear the Lord and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from God, from the Lord of 
host. They hardened their hearts. And this is not the first time they will pick up stones say this was their normal reaction whenever they didn't understand anything except of accepting ignorance and accepting that they were blind, accepting that could, they could not see, accepting saying, Lord, we're spiritually blind, help us, open our eyes. Instead of coming to the Lord and pleading that the Lord will change their spiritual condition, whenever they didn't understand anything, you know, the next thing is they bend down, what do they pick up? I said, what did they pick up? But they never used that stone on Jesus because Jesus was not meant to be stoned. And whatever is not meant for you will not come your way. Any kind of missile that is not, that is not for you will not come your way. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, in the dream, that thing is not for you. Send it back to the sender. I said, send it back to the sender. It will not come upon you in Jesus' name. Hey, look at John. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 56. John chapter 8 verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and he was glad. Look at verse 57. It's, and then they said, the Jews said unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, as thou seen Abraham. Look at this. Jesus said unto them jesus said are you hearing i said are you hearing verily verily i say unto you tell me out aloud before abraham was i am look at verse 59 then took thee up tell me stones to cast at him did it get to him no it never got to him it will not get to you but Jesus hid himself and he went out of the temple going through the midst of them so they passed by. Look at, look at this. You see, whenever they did something like that, it just showed their ignorance, showed their hardness of heart. We're looking at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. This had been their plan for a long time. They hated him in their heart. They detested him in their heart. They rejected him in their heart. And they were not even prepared to understand. He was saying something. They were ready to misunderstand because their ignorance always came to the surface whenever Jesus said anything. Matthew chapter 12 and I read from verse 13. Then, uh, so then said he to the man stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it forth and it was restored whole like as the other. A normal person will be happy. We've seen a miracle we've never seen. A reasonable person will be happy. We've just seen something now. No prophet had ever done this. And no preacher had ever done this in their own day. And there is no, there is no uh, priest that did this in their own day. That Jesus Christ proving to them his credentials of the Messiah. His credentials that this is Jesus the Christ and the Savior of the world. He just told them, and stretch for their hand and it was restored like the other but look at the reaction look at the response and look at uh, what they were going to do then the Pharisees went out and held the counsel against him tell me how they might destroy him I thought they said for a good work we stone thee not this is a good work here this is a good work he had done and because now he did this that no other person had done that's why they wanted to stone him. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 46. Luke chapter 19. Reading from verse 46. He did so many miracles among them. They couldn't bear. They couldn't understand. And it threatened the religious position. It threatened the religious authority. That's why they just said, get rid of him. Stone him. Destroy him. Kill him. And forget about him. Luke chapter 19. Reading from verse 46. Saying unto them. It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. He taught daily in the temple. And the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to do what? To destroy him. 
They had not done anything bad. He just taught the word of God and taught the words of the kingdom. And then he taught them like a man having authority, which all those Pharisees and the Sadducees did not have. That because of that, all they could think about is to him, get rid of him because of the great work he had done. Think about these Jews. Let's come back to John. We're coming back to John chapter 10. And I'm reading here from verse 31. John chapter 10. Verse 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. You think about this, so near yet so far. These Jews were so near to the Savior, yet so far from salvation. So near to the one, the giver of life, and yet they were so far from eternal life. They were so near the heavenly teacher, yet they were so far from the eternal truth. Here is the eternal teacher, here is the heavenly teacher, here is the everlasting teacher before them. They were so near, and yet they were so far. These people were so near to the light. Jesus Christ announced to them unmistakably, unmistakably, and he said, I am the light of the world and they were before him they were so near to him and yet there was so there was there were they died groping in darkness the serious problem was their stony heart the serious problem was their hardened hearts. The serious problem was their deceived hearts. The serious problem was their blind hearts, their proud hearts, uncircumcised hearts, their seared conscience. Let's come back to this again. We're looking at Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 7 again. And I'm going to read that verse 12 for you to understand what their major problem was. And if they saw that their hearts were hard, they could have taken that heart to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, our heart is so hard. Our heart is so stony. Can you soften the heart for us? We want to believe. Help thou our own belief. But instead of praying, instead of seeking the Lord, all they could think about is stone him, kill him, destroy him, get rid of him, and then there will be no light again. But thank God there is still light. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Look at the condition of their heart. What made them to pick up stones, wanting to stone him? Yea, they made their hearts like an adamant stone, stony heart, stony heart, lest they should hear the law. And the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Not only that they had stony hearts, they had deceived hearts. They thought they were right, were religious, we go to the synagogue, we go to the temple, and we obey the law, and we kill Ram, and we kill this, and we're seeking the face of the Lord, and we're keeping to the laws of the first covenant. Obviously, if we die, we're going to heaven. No, you're not going to heaven. With that anger in the heart, indignation in the heart, and with that murderous spirit in your heart, and with that uh, steel and seared conscience, no, you cannot get to heaven like that. They were deceived. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 44. Here is uh, the reason they picked up stones. You see, if anybody has a kind of heart like this, all he can think about is to pick up a stone. All he can do is to think of a shoot and arrow. All he can do is think about how to destroy the Messiah, destroy the Christ, and destroy the Savior. But nobody can destroy the Savior. He can only destroy himself. Yeah. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 20. He feedeth on ashes. He deceived heart has turned him aside. He deceived. And that's the reason why these people, they had the word of God, words that no man had ever spoken. And they saw the glory of the king of kings, the, the, the glory that had never been revealed on any king. And yet, all they could think about was how they would stone him. He feedeth on ashes. He deceived heart has turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul nor say is there not a lie in my right hand you see that we're looking at jeremiah chapter 48 jeremiah chapter 48 and i'm reading from verse 29 jeremiah chapter 48 and we're reading from verse tell me the verse now from verse 29, Jeremiah chapter 48, we're looking at uh, verse 29, uh, it says, we've heard the pride of Moab. His exceeding proud, his loftiness, his arrogancy, and his pride, and the haughtiness of his 
heart, the haughtiness of his heart. It's a proud heart that, oh, we have the truth. Anything that anybody says different from what you know already cannot be true. We've seen the Pharisees. They told us everything there is to tell. We've seen the priests and the chief priests and they have taught us everything there is to teach. Anybody that comes to say any other thing beyond what we know will seal it up. It cannot be true. That's pride. To say, I know everything. Christ comes. The Savior comes. The Shepherd comes. The way, the truth, and the life comes. The resurrection of the life comes. And it comes to point out the way. And say, no, I am not accepting that. I know everything already. Thank God I don't know everything. I said I don't know everything. That's why we're saying, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. We're talking to the teacher. We're pleading with the teacher. The teacher that has come from heaven, let him teach us. He will teach you in Jesus' name. But their proud hearts will not allow them to receive any other teaching and any other instruction from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Obadiah chapter 1 has only one chapter actually. Obadiah, Obadiah having only one chapter I'm looking at verse 3, it says, The pride of thine heart has deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that says in his heart, who will, who will bring me down to the earth? These were the people that took the ground. These were the people that thought were up there and were the highest of religion, were the best religion, the, great, the greatest religion. Our religion has dated from the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we have got to the zenith, we have got to the top, and there's no other scene, and nobody can bring us down. And God said, I'll bring you down. I'll bring you down because your heart is so proud. You are not accepting what I've given to my only begotten son. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 51. Acts chapter 7. This is the condition of their heart. The heart that made them to reject the truth. The heart that made them to refuse the truth. The heart that made them to want to pick up stones and stone Jesus. It says in Acts chapter 7 verse 51. He is stiff -necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. As your fathers did, your fathers missed everlasting life. And you're doing the same thing, you're missing everlasting life. Your fathers missed heaven. And you're doing the same thing, you're going to miss heaven. Your fathers had hardened hearts, unbelieving hearts, proud hearts, haughty hearts, uncircumcised hearts. And you are doing the same thing. And you're going to miss heaven. As your fathers did, so do ye. It was a great warning, I pray. Uh, whatever our parents have missed, we're not going to miss. Whatever they lack, we are not going to lack. We are looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I am reading from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Having their understanding darkened. That's why they wanted to stone Jesus. They were darkened in their hearts and their understanding. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart. Uh, there was something that had happened to their conscience. That if they did anything, they wouldn't feel guilty at all. You see, when the conscience is seared, when the conscience is hardened, when the conscience will not allow any light to come in, people can do anything, anywhere, any time, anyhow, because there's no conscience to check them, that's why they go on in evil. And if they die like that, it's unfortunate for them, they will perish. We're looking at First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four, and I'm reading from verse I'm reading from verse two. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What happened to these uh, Jews that picked up stones and, they want, and wanted to stone Jesus Christ? The tradition of historic religion. You see, one religion has dated a century, two centuries, three centuries, 
and the 1,000 years, 1,500 years have been there for a long time. They just be quoting history. There is no present experience of forgiveness of sin. There's no present experience of conversion. There's no present experience of being born again. But, you know, there is a religion. Our father brought it to this village. And there is the place where Deacon so and so, this is why it was ordained. Archbishop so and so, this is why it was in historic religion. And that tradition of historic religion hindered them from seeing the light of the gospel of Christ, the way, the way of life, the way, the truth, and the life was right before them, and yet they missed heaven. How is it with you? How is it with you? I've been in the church since uh -huh, history. I've been in this ministry since this time. That is history. What's the present condition of your heart? How are you responding? How are you reacting to the word of God? To the word of life? And what change? What transformation is that word of life doing within you today? In your office, do they know that that's a child of God? In your family, do you know that that's a different person? Is distinguished. This, she's different. She'll not do this with us. We can see the light in her life. But you know, if you don't have that, only historic religion, historic religion, I pray you'll drop all the useless things and then come to life in Christ in Jesus' name. And then, anytime something happens you don't understand, you will not be looking for a stone. You'll kneel down right there. You'll say, Lord, I don't understand. Open my eyes of understanding that I will understand the word of God. And the Lord will open your eyes of understanding in Jesus' name. Let's come back to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm reading now from verse 34. John chapter 10 verse 34. Already now you know that you know the stones in their hands have dropped down because Jesus Christ is stood there without fear. You will not have any fear. He stood there without intimidation. You will not be intimidated. He stood there without any compromise. He stood because he was the Messiah, the Christ. And he had conviction. And any stone in one hand, in two hands, in ten hands will not take his conviction away. And I pray that no stone will take your conviction away. And no anger of anybody, of any Pharisee, of any Sadducee, of any Jew will take your conviction away in Jesus' name. And so now, he continued with them. He continued his name with them. Look at verse 34. He said, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? And ye are, he said, Ye are gods. You say that I have uh, blasphemed because I said, I and my father are one. And say I make myself God. Have you not read in your scriptures where it says ye are gods? Let's come to the Old Testament. Look at what it was referring to. I'm looking at uh, some, some 82. Some 82. They thought they knew the scriptures. And they thought that Jesus Christ had contradicted the scriptures. That's why they picked up stones and they wanted to stone him. And Jesus said, you don't know what you think you know. You don't remember what you think you remember. You don't understand what you think you have read. In uh, Psalm 82 verse 6 I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Actually in this passage the almighty God was talking to the judges and the magistrates. He said judges magistrates you represent me and because you represent me you must judge with equity and with righteousness and there must be justice. There must be no unrighteousness in your judgment. You understand? While you are standing in there, you are standing in my place. I am God and I now allow you, at that time you are standing in that office of the judge over the children of Israel and you are declaring my truth unto them. I have said, ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. And Jesus will say, have you read? Have you read in your law? Have you read in the old covenant that he said ye are God? If he told the judges, the ordinary people, who could even make a mistake while they were standing representing him, if he said ye are God, do you say about me that the heavenly father have said, were you there at Jordan when we had the voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased? 
How is it to say about a man like that that you blaspheme? Okay, you are not on the Mount of Transfiguration as Peter, as John, as James. They were there when Moses appeared and Elijah appeared and a great cloud appeared and a voice from heaven said, this is my only begotten son. Hear ye him. If you had been there, you'll not be talking the way you are talking. And if you knew the scriptures, you'll not be talking the way you are talking. Hey, look at um, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, when he wanted to convince his own disciples about himself, when he came back and he rose from the dead, he went back to the scriptures. If you knew the scriptures, you will not be saying that Jesus Christ Christ have blasphemed. We're looking at Luke chapter 24 and I'm reading from verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to have, and to have entered into his glory? Look at this, look at this. And beginning and Moses and all the prophets and he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When God opens your eyes, when you read Genesis, you'll find Jesus there. If you read Exodus, you'll find Jesus there. If you read the Psalms, you'll find Jesus there. He went to the book of Moses and he went to the prophets and he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Look at verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things, look at this, all things, all all things, all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. If you understand the scriptures, all the cloudy things will be taken away from you. And you see, uh, but there's something about these uh, people, you know, these Jews, before they came to the presence of Christ, you know what they had in mind? They came not to hear the truth. They came watching for something that Jesus will say that they could hold on to. Already they have made up their minds. Already they have decided he is wrong. And we're going to prove him wrong. And then they came to that congregation. The people that come to a Bible study like that, you know, they come. It's not, they don't come to learn. They're not coming to say, I don't understand. Oh, Lord, I'm going to the Bible study. Teach me. They're not coming to learn. They have not come to say, oh, Lord, it looks like my actions are showing that I'm backsliding. And I want to be restored. Let the Bible study of today restore me to the real place I ought to be. There are people that come and they're not saying, Lord, I know I'm not saying. I know I'm not holy. I know I'm not ready for the rapture. The Bible story I'm going today, let it transform my life and change everything so that I'll become rapturable. They come so that they are watching for something wrong. They are watching for something he will say so. It's okay because he said that and because he pointed at me and because he did like this. Uh -huh, I have a reason now to pick up a stone. I pray that God will knock that stone out of your hand. And God will show you the way to heaven. And God will show you how to make heaven in Jesus' name. L let me show you what I mean. I'm looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 20. Isaiah chapter 29. And we're reading from verse 20. So you will see how they came and why they came. And you know their intention. And they had already prepared when we get there. This is what we're going to do. They were watching for a word that Jesus will say wrong and even if nothing was wrong they would misinterpret it to be wrong and so they can have a reason for doing the evil they wanted to do i pray your life will not be like that i said your life will not be like that but you'll come wanting to learn, wanting to be convicted, wanting to be converted, wanting to be sanctified, and wanting to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, wanting to be more useful in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 20. It says, For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch 
for iniquity are cut off. They watch for iniquity. They watch for a fault. They watch for something to go wrong. They watch for iniquity. They are, they, they are cut off. Look at verse 21. That make a man an offender for a word. That's what they did to Jesus. They were listening intently. They were listening critically. And they were listening with both ears. They wanted to find something they will say. They will say, uh-huh, that is wrong. And because they said that, we have the right to pick up the stone and stone him. Verse 21, that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproves in the gate and turn aside the just for a sin of naught. For something that doesn't have any consequence. For something of, uh, of no consequence at all. They turn aside uh, a man that is saying the right. If you attend a place of worship. If you attend a place of Bible study. If you attend a crusade with such a mind. Purposely to find fault. Satan will turn light into darkness in your mind. It will be light. Something clear. Something plain. Something right. But then Satan will turn it to the darkness. Satan will turn the truth to be error. You, you see, the truth, when we declare the truth about holiness and the truth about sanctification, if you are watching for a fault, Satan will turn that truth into an error. He'll turn light into darkness. He'll turn life into death. He'll turn liberation into bondage. The thing that should bring life to you and bring liberation to you, deliverance to you, Satan will talk you to something to bind you. He'll turn help and health to hurt. The thing that should heal you and that's the word of coming forth, it will heal you in Jesus' name. But you know, if you have a wrong heart, if you have a wrong attitude, that thing that should help you and heal you will hurt you. The thing that will make the preacher to be your friend and the savior to be your friend, he'll turn the preacher, he'll turn the savior to be your foe and your enemy. He'll turn the shepherd to become a stranger unto you. Here is the shepherd of the sheep that was calling upon them, believe. And as you believe, I'm going to gather you unto life eternal, unto life everlasting. And the thing that shall come to you as this is the savior, this is the sanctifier, this is the purifier, this is the refiner, this is the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. That word will turn to you as if that's the word of a stranger. The one that will turn, that will show you that here is the begotten son of God. You'll say he's a blasphemer instead of believing because you came with a wrong attitude. Because you came watching for a fault. But if you are not watching for a fault and say, Lord, I don't know, teach me, the Lord will teach you. The Lord will turn your life around and you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And then, if the defending of the scripture is your goal, that I came so that I will honestly contend for the faith, once delivered unto the saints, you will not deny the scripture in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at this Jesus Christ now. Let's look at what he told them. Uh, the reason why they were with the way they were. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 22 and I'm reading from verse 29. Matthew chapter 22 and I'm reading from verse 29. It tells us in verse 29, Jesus said, Jesus and son and said unto them, ye do ear, Pharisees, ye do ear, you Jews, ye do ear, ye Sadducees, ye do ear, these religious people not knowing the scriptures not the power of God that was their problem that was their problem they were making mistakes they were going astray because they didn't know the scriptures not the power of God look at John chapter 9 he was John chapter 5 he was redirecting them to the scriptures he said the scripture cannot be broken if you understood the scriptures you understand that this is in line with the scripture that that I said, I am the Son of God. In John chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they, that's the scriptures, and they are they, that's the holy writings, and they are they, that's, that's the Old Testament, and they are they that 
testify of me. I pray when you read, you'll discover that word and you'll see it talks about Jesus in Jesus' name. Now, we're coming back to the Old Testament now. How is it? He said, if you had known the scripture, oh, what did I say that you're picking up a stone? What have I said that you're full of indignation? What have I said that you're picking up stone to stone me? I just said, I'm the son of God. Didn't you hear that in your Old Testament? We're looking at Psalm 2, and I'm reading here from verse 1. Why are you angry? Why are you uh, so pugnacious? And why are you so filled with indignation? And we're looking at Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, and against his anointed. You see that? Against the Lord, that's God, against his anointed, that's Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall love, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his great truth and vex them in his sore displeasure. Listen to this, listen to this. Yet have I said, tell me, my king upon my holy hill of Zion, verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, tell me out aloud. Tell me, tell me. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He said, go and read your scriptures. If you knew the scriptures, scripture cannot be broken. You will see it there very clearly. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. I'm reading Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 4. Proverbs chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 4. Here he tells us, he's asking a series of questions, and there you will see the point of the question. He says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has uh, gathered the wind in his feet? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? Hold on, hold on. You know, as you look at those questions, he's asking, anybody can answer this. Who has done this to hold the wind in your hand? Only God can do that. Am I right? And then, to, you know, he says, uh, who has established all the ends of the earth? Only God can do that. Look at this. What's his name? God. What is his son's name? Jesus. Old Testament. Old Testament. That's why Jesus was telling them, why are you bending down to pick a stone? What's the stone doing in your hand? What did you hear? What embarrasses you? What is it you are opposed to? Why are you wanting to stone me? Eh, because they said, you are the son of God. You make yourself equal with God. He said, but go and read your scriptures. And the scriptures cannot be broken. What's his name? What's his son's name? If thou can't tell. Thank God I can tell. I said, thank God I can tell. Somebody there you can tell. You're telling Jesus' name. Hey, look at this. Look at this. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7. We're reading from verse 14. It says, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And thou shalt call his name. Shout it out. Emmanuel. Look at the meaning of that. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 1. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And that's the, that's the scripture. Go back to read the Old Testament. Go back to read your scripture and you will find what has been said concerning Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 it says, And she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from um, their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, a virgin shall be a child, and shall be, bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, tell me, Emmanuel, which be interpreted is 
God with us. Look at that. Look at that. Emmanuel is God with us. And we're coming back. We're coming from the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. And it says his name will be Emmanuel. And interpretation of Emmanuel is God with us. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9. And we're reading from verse 6. Open your Bible. We're studying the Bible together. Isaiah chapter 9 verse Verse 6, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Look at that. That's the son. That's the son, the son of God. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Ah, look at that. That's the son. That's the son. And it says the son will be called the mighty God, the everlasting father, the father of eternity, and the prince of peace. Of the increase of his kingdom and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And now you have seen from the Old Testament scriptures, you have seen what Jesus Christ depended upon and what he relied upon as he told them, I am the Son of God. And those who believe in me, I give unto them eternal life and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. And my Father is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand and I and my Father are one. We don't need any stone. Let all the stone be thrown away. Because the truth has come. Jesus is Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is our shepherd. And Jesus is that everlasting Savior, everlasting Son of God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And as you believe on Him, He will give you eternal life. I said He will give you eternal life. And now we're looking at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. Verse 6, and again when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God wash him. Look at verse 8. But unto the Son, capital S, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. He was not the one that made himself the Son of God. It was the Heavenly Father that said, That is my only begotten Son. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 5. We're looking at verse 5. It says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that says unto him, Thou art my Son. Today have I begotten thee. Jesus is the Son of God. And He's our Savior. And He's our Redeemer. And I pray that as you receive Him, that eternal life that He brought will be your possession in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The decisive response of to the incarnate Son. Incarnate Son, that means uh, the Son of God. God, very God from all eternity, who put on human flesh. That's the incarnation there. The incarnate Son. The decisive response. We're coming to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 40. And when and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at fall baptized and there he abode. Well, after enlightening them and then those who will take the truth will take the truth, he left them. He departed from them. I pray the Lord will not depart from us. 
they will not depart from your house. But you see, the people that hear the truth and reject the truth, what do you expect? Because God says, my spirit will not always strive with men. The people that hear the everlasting truth, the saving truth, the redeeming truth, and then reject the redemption, they reject that salvation, what do you expect? My spirit shall not always strive with man. And because of that, Jesus departed from them. Look at what some people did, verse 41, and many resorted unto him. They left the Pharisees. They left those blind teachers. They left those hardened religious people. And they followed after Jesus. Many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. John the Baptist did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And when they got to Jesus Christ, they said, we have no other Savior, we have no other Redeemer, we have no other Shepherd. You are our Savior, our Redeemer, our Shepherd, and many believed on him there. On what grounds? Look at this. You see, Jesus Christ had been shown to the Israelites by John the Baptist. He said, this is he, of whom I told you, the one I came before him, but he is greater than I, because he has been before me. And he revealed Christ unto them. John did not perform any miracle. He didn't open the eyes of the blind. He didn't make the dead to rise up from the dead. He didn't make the lame to start walking, but he told the truth. And so, if you have a ministry, even though you are not a walking miracle or whatever, but you are talking, you are saying that this is Jesus, this is the Savior, this is the Redeemer, the Lord will use your testimony. He will use your witness. And what you are saying about Jesus, many will resort to Jesus and go to Jesus and believe on him. And through you, many will have eternal life. Many will get to heaven through you in Jesus' name. And so they said, although he did not work any miracle, but he testified of him. What did he say about him? Look at this in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 6. In John chapter 1, verse 6, it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, and that all men, all men through him, might believe. He was not the light, capital L, but he was saying to be a witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world he was in the world and the world knew him the, he was, the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his soul and his soul received him not but thank God as many as received him I'm one of them I said I'm one of them as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, John bore witness concerning Jesus Christ. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it says, And then the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Look at verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he that baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, and I saw, and I saw, and bear witness and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as the walk said, Behold the Lamb of God. God. He bore witness concerning him. In fact, Jesus even told them, look at uh, John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 33. John chapter 5, verse 33. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Don't you remember? You sent her to John, and you're asking about me, you're asking concerning me from him. Look at verse 35. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. And so eventually, many believed on him there. Are there believers in the house tonight? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is your Savior? You'll never leave him. And he will never leave you. 
Look at other people like you. John chapter 7, John chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 31. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ comes, will he do more miracles than these, than this man has done? People like us, they heard him. And did it allow Satan to take away the word from their heart? And they believed on him. They said, this is the Savior. That time he had not even died on the cross. He was still going to the cross. But now he has died on the cross. He has shed his blood for you. And now if you believe on him, he will save you in Jesus' name. Chapter 8 of John. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. And as he speak these words, many believed on him. And to surprise that even though Pharisees doubted, even though the scorners conned, even though all those people said we're going to stone him, yet yeah, there are people that said, I'm not going to be like those people. I'm going to believe on him. And they believed on him, verse, uh, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Anybody there? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And look at chapter 11, chapter 11, verse 45. Chapter 11, verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed on him believed on him all those references i'm reading to you is telling us something what's that telling us the jews judged him wrongly yet people believed on him antagonists accused him angrily yet people believed in jesus sinners slighted him foolishly and yet there were people that believed on jesus scoffers scorned him fearlessly and fiercely and yet there were people that said you can scorn you can slander you can scrutinize and you can do whatever but i know of a surety this is the savior religious reprobates reviled him and ridiculed him and yet they did that uh, they did that maliciously and yet there were people that believed on him backsliders betrayed him shamelessly and detractors denied him openly and yet there were people that said in the midst of that whatever the people said whatever the people did were going to believe and they believed maybe in your community maybe in your family maybe there are people that are jesting and joking that that really called jesus because of that you say what am i going to do now and then you drop your head lift up your head be a child of god and say whatever you say i know for a surety this is my savior he'll be your savior Amen. you see those pharisees they fought him ceaselessly and the sadducees landed him relentlessly the scribes scrutinized him mercilessly yet he continued he continued if you're a child of god you will continue if you're a servant of the Lord, you'll continue. Whatever people do, whatever people say, evil reports there, slanderous work there, and criticism there, whatever, as Jesus continued, you will continue. He continued preaching, you will continue. He continued teaching, you'll continue. He continued ministering, you'll continue. He continued seeking the lost and saving the lost, you will continue. He continued healing the sick. They said, he healed the sick by the spirit of Beelzebub. He's using the power of Satan. You see, he didn't listen to them, you will not listen to them. Am I talking to somebody there? I said you will not listen to them. You will continue like he did in Jesus' name. And he went about doing good and healing all that were deep, all that were oppressed of the devil. He continued doing the will of God and doing the work of the Father who sent him and were told many, many multitudes in their thousands and thousands, they believed on him. Do you know God can use you like this? I said, you know God can use you like this. But if you, you know, if you are walking and walking and there you hear people, eh, we well, know why he's doing that. He's looking for this. He's looking for this. And they slander you and they criticize you. And say, okay, to keep my good name, what good name do you have? Throw it to the Lord and continue walking for God. I said, continue walking for God. Am I talking to somebody that will continue? What is she? What is he there? I will continue. I said I will continue and through you I'm looking for him. 
I say through you, many will believe on the Lord. You will get to heaven. Your converts will get to heaven. Have you heard about the crusade that is starting, uh, you know, in two days' time? Have you heard? You'll have converts there. You'll be there. You are going to block everything out. You know, walk this, 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 and you are going to be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday morning, you'll be in our church, in the local church. You bring your converse, and in the evening, you go and finalize that a crusade. You are going to be there, and I can see many believing through you, many staying through you, and many saying, "I'm going to stay." I see the beauty of Christ in your life, the glory of God on your face. I like to be in the church you are going, so that we continue together. You'll continue with me. I said you'll continue with me and they will continue with you. If you're going to continue, rise up and tell the Lord from the death of your Lord, you have called me Lord. You have laid your hand upon me. I will continue. I will continue. Let them say, let them say whatever they say, whatever they are not saying, whatever it is, Lord, I am going to continue. You'll continue. The glory of God will be upon your life and you will continue. The glory of God will be upon the life of the people that are going to believe through you too and many believed on him there.